hashtag here. We've got a great video for you guys today. So this is my book, Kyle. Hey, guys. And today we're going to be building a from scratch ultimate gaming PC. Now, the goal for this project is to make the budget $1,000. And I'm very happy to say that we hit the budget. So this whole build is going to be under $1,000. So let's take a quick look at the components of this build. So over here, we got the Intel i7 core. Now this is one of the best processors out there. So I definitely recommend picking one of these up. And it's only, well what we got it for was only $279, which is actually amazing for one of these. It's the 700K. Um, so definitely recommend picking one of these up. For the um, graphics card, this is a gaming PC, so you definitely want a graphics card. I recommend picking up the Zotac GeForce GTX 1060. Now, the best graphics card that is out there with the NVIDIA team is the 1080, but the 1080 is ridiculously expensive. And at the 1060, you're not coming in too much lower, but still amazing graphics, able to run 4K and virtual reality. Okay, so the next part that we have here is this, what you see right here, the motherboard. Now, this is actually one of the nicest motherboards I've seen so far. It is the Z270 Gaming Pro in carbon fiber. Now, this, this, um, this comes in a lot of different variations. So you can get the normal Z270, you can get the 270L+, Plus, all these variations. But I definitely recommend the gaming version if you're planning on streaming high-definition games. The, the awesome part about this motherboard is that it has RGB lighting inside of it, which is amazing and it's going to look awesome in the final PC. Alright, so the next part you're going to use is the uh, power supply, and it's just an essential for any computer. Um, so we got one here. The next thing you need is RAM, and we got uh, one stick of 8, eight gigs, so that's pretty useful. We went with one stick instead of two, uh, just makes it a little bit more compact. So there's that. And then the final thing we have is the fan. And you need that over your processor to pull it down. And the uh, Intel i7 doesn't come with one, so that's why we have a, another expert. So this is kind of like the basis of what you're going to need. You can also see here we threw together a really cheap keyboard and mouse combo that you can get and still be under $1,000. And of course, if you're building a PC, you're going to need a case. So let's pop this open and begin the bit. All right, let's start this build. So as you can see, we already took out the case. This is the Versa N27 from Thermal Lake. And this is the Snow Edition, which is really nice because you got this nice white glow, this little glossy look, and it has red RGB lighting inside, which is really good. I thought I was gonna like the matte look better, but it turns out glossy, definitely the way to go. So the first thing that we're gonna install is gonna be the battery, the main thing powering the whole machine. So let's get this open. Now the only thing you're going to need for this entire project is a screwdriver. The only tool you're going to need. Okay? So let's start by putting in the battery. Okay, now that we got the battery out in front of us, we're going to install this very simply. So you're going to make sure that your fan is facing upwards and that your power button is facing outwards. Alright? So once you do that, you're going to take the battery and find the open slot in your case and you're simply going to put it in and hold it fast so that the battery and the on button is facing outwards. Now you'll see here we got four holes that we're basically going to screw into it. Right there, 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 and there. So we're going to make sure that this battery is nice and tight in all these spots and then we're going to just screw it in. Okay, now that we got the battery installed, we're going to move on to the motherboard. So we can put this away and just focus on the motherboard. So here we got the MSI Gaming Pro. As you can see, very sleek, very nice looking. So we got our Intel i Core 7 processor here. So we're going to very, very carefully remove this. You definitely want to be delicate with this part. Because if you can ruin one thing, the entire system will fail. So we're just going to open that up nice and openly. Set that aside for a second. And so this is where our processor is actually going to be installed. So the way you open this up, you're going to just take this link here, and you're just going to open it up, just simply like that, and it'll lift up. Alright, so now we're going to take out our processor, again, very, very carefully. And the way you install it is you look for the two dots on the processor. And once you find those, you have to mash it up with the two dots on the side 
here, so right here. I'm just going to set that in. I'll just drop it in. Now that that's in, you're going to close it by lifting this, bringing it back, and pushing it down. So that's it. Locks in like that. We're going to go ahead and install the fan. So now that we got that down, the first thing we're going to have to do is going to take this paste that comes with the fan and we're just going to lay it up right on top of the processor right there. So what we're going to do is squeeze that down and make sure no paste gets cut out. Slice it right off. Alright, there we go. Look at that. Rain goopy. Alright, we're just going to install that. Ooh, just like that. Evenly, you don't want to use too much in one spot. There we go. Alright, so now that we did that, we're going to take our fan right here, and we're going to install it into these four knobs that we actually pre-put in. So make sure that when you do this, you have pre-put in the knobs. They'll come with the instructions for the fan. Well, other than that, you take that and you just screw in these four knobs here, and then we're going to be set to go. Alright, now that we got the four screws installed down, we're going to put on the heat sink. Okay, so the way that we do this is we're just going to take it by the clamps here, and we're just going to slip it on, and just pop it on the other side very easily, just like that. Alright, there we got our heat sink on, and now we're just going to take this cord here. Find the panel that says CPU fan, which for us is going to be this four right here. And just find the spot and put it on. Make sure you put it on the right way. Just like that. And there we got our fan installed. So as you can see here, we brought the case back and we went ahead and plopped the motherboard right down in there. Now it's really important to line up every single one of the screw holes when you're popping this in. And the best way to tell is by looking at the side here, you want to make sure that this little brace that we put on has all of the holes in the proper outlets and spaced properly. So now that we've done that, we're going to take this heaping pile of screws here and take the ones we need and we're going to go ahead and screw this motherboard in. Alright, now that we got the motherboard secured, we're going to go ahead and plug in the RAM. So we got our one stick of 8 gigabyte RAM here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this slot here, right next to our fan, right next to our CPU, we're just going to push the top to pop open the first row slot. Once we do that, we're going to take this with the arrows pointing down. We're going to go ahead and slip the tip into that. Tip into that. We're going to go ahead and push down on this. There we go. And then just clamp it in place. Alright, now that we've got most of the parts installed, we're going to go ahead and install the last part which is the graphics card. So right over here, we got our Zotec graphics card. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, as you can see, we pre-took out these three panels here to fit the graphics card because just like the RAM, this section here is going to be placed right inside here. So you want the space for these openings, these outlets to drop in. So what we're going to do is we're just going to push back, just like the RAM, except two of them this time. And then we're going to go ahead and find the spot where it goes in smoothly, set down the screwdriver. And we're going to go ahead and push down until we hear it click it. That way we know it's secure. Alright, now that we got all the stuff put together, we went ahead and put the wires in already. Now, to connect the wires, it's really easy. You just look at what the wire says on its label and then connect it to the designated spot on the motherboard, which is also labeled very nicely. So that makes it really easy. So we're not going to walk you through that whole thing. Um, clearly, cable management could use some work, but we'll go ahead and do that later after this video. Now, we're going to go ahead and close this up. So we want to make sure that we line up the screw holes here and make sure we put aside the proper screws to use for this. Now the other two. Alright guys, it's time for the final test. Alright, all we gotta do, plug it in, hope it doesn't explode. Alright, simple plug in. Now don't freak out if it doesn't turn on, because you do need to hit the power button on the actual thing to make sure it works. So right here, I'm gonna test it. Three, two, one. 
Look at that, seems to be running beautifully. Nice little LEDs going on here. Looks great. All right, so I think for my first build, at least not his, I think it went pretty smoothly. What do you think? Yeah, not bad. I think it looks beautiful, and definitely the quality is going to be amazing for under a thousand dollars. Just think about that. So in case you didn't catch all the parts at the beginning or during the video, I'm going to have a link to every single one of the parts used in the description below. So make sure you check that out, and um, I'll catch you guys in the next video.